what's what's the vibe like? I've got the way to kind of is, is there is there a kind of a, a way or, or a reason for y'all to kind of level off and say, hey, you know, we've got a guy to put that one behind us and get on Chicago? I mean, yeah, definitely. I mean, we that we obviously get celebrated the win, you know, um, but on to the next week. We got sixteen more weeks left and you know we gotta focus on next week. So we focus on Chicago now. T, your coach and multiple of your teammates said that you were one of the players they thought was gonna have a breakout season this year. What specifically were you focused on improving this off season and how do you feel about that when you hear that your player your teammates would just think that about you? Yeah, um, you know the big thing is just uh, knowing the playbook inside out. And that way, I can go out there on the field and play with confidence and play fast. Did you, did you have a different uh, feel uh, about this team compared to last year? What was it feeling like out there on Sunday compared to maybe uh, last year? I just feel like we're more together as a team. You know, it actually feels like family now. And you know, also the you know the fans, it helps as well. You know, having the fans in the stadium, you know, uh, giving us that that energy. Uh, but you know. What I said, um, you know, it's just more more of a family feel now this year, and feel like we're playing together. At what point did you feel like okay, five rounds is a little different than it was? You know, maybe a little bit closer than where we last season. Um, to me, I felt like it was during OTAs. Uh, a lot of the guys were, you know, connected, and then once training camp started, you can just see how everybody just interacting with each other. You know, more and more in the locker room and and on the field. So I mean, just it's just great. So yeah. Why did you know the case? Why do you think that? I don't know. Just wanted to be tired of losing. You know, just want to change things around, and and I felt like that was one of the things that we needed needed to change is just be more be more as a team and more as a family. You played big stadiums, big crowds, obviously ACC Joe, the same thing. But this is going to be the first time you two are really going to be in a capacity stadium on the road. Mm -hmm. What are the biggest challenges, receiver, quarterback, to get on the same page? Um. You know, just going out there, you know, practicing and, you know, doing what we've been doing. Uh, obviously, it's going to be crowd noise. So, you know, receivers got to watch the ball. You know, can't, can't have no false starts or anything like that. And, uh, you know, for Joe, he just got to stay poised and just be him. How tough was getting through the game on Sunday? Obviously, you were dehydrated or whatever. What were you kind of going through? And how tough was to try to finish up there? Yeah, um, yeah, once I caught the cramp, you know, uh, went out, went to go get an IV. But uh, you know, I, I asked the trainers to put the game on in, in the locker room so I can see, like, see what's going on. And uh, I was like, man, I got to get back out there. So I got back out there. It felt great. Uh, obviously, Cavs are still sore, but you know, I still went out there and you know, helped my team get a get a W. Had you, had you ever had cramps and stuff like that in the game before? That's just something you dealt with. I have, but I haven't cramped like that since high school. Um, you know, I just felt like I got off my routine last week. And this this week I'm I'm back on it. So how do you get off your routine? Just uh, as far as eating or you're drinking or yeah, you know, just drinking, getting an IV bag, uh, just just didn't get what I usually do. So first touchdown was kind of classic. T Higgins, you you uh, kind of made a big body play in there. What did you see? And what did you see from Joe, who looked like he took a shot in there, kind of wait wait for things to develop? Mm -hmm. So uh yeah, uh, the play, you know was for me to go to the pylon, but I had ran into a defender myself. And it was it's kind of like the Eagles game last year. Uh, he hit me right in that hole. And, you know, I just, like you said, I just made a play with my body and scored, so. I mean, it looked like he took a shot. You nah, I, a nah, I didn't notice it, to be honest. <laughs> Is there any story behind that that you're right now? Oh, yeah. So this guy, when we come in for practice, this guy is always waiting with uh, some Jackpack Joey gear. And I like trucker hats, so I was like, man, can I get that hat? He's like, sure, man. And then he gave me some stuff from me and my mom. Uh, but, you know, got to represent my boy Joe, Jackpack Joey, I mean, no. So I think that you said on the podcast, you were talking about the like you're changing your number this year, like you did 10 TDs, is that correct? Is that is that, is that, is that, uh, what's going on with that? <laughs> yeah, that's what I said. Oh, but I think I'm going to change anyway. So. So no matter what, this is your last year at 85? Yeah. Yeah. That's my, what are you going to I'm going back to five. Five? Yeah. So, so could, could five, one, and three, and 
three happen? Are you gonna try to convince Boyd to go to three and you guys can be five one threes instead of <laughs> Tyler's I don't think he'll change. <laughs> yeah, I don't think he's gonna change. <laughs> so you're changing your number to five next year? Yeah. yeah. If you play with Tom Brady, that'd be a problem. No, right? <laughs> I don't wanna make that a big deal though, you know, I just wanna be focused on this year with eighty five and then next year, you know, five it is. We're doing something on, the, uh, on the, that 2019 National Championship game. Um, well, well, when you scored that touchdown, I guess it was 17-7 in the second half. What was the, what was the vibe like on the sideline? What was, what was your game like? Man, I'm like, oh, yeah, we got this. We, we playing good. Defense playing well. Uh, you know, we're blitzing, getting Joe a lot of pressure. And I just felt like we was going to come out on top. But then, you know, halftime come around, Joe Burrow clicks and, Y'all seen the rest. <laughs> Y'all know the rest. What's your most vivid memory from that night? That um, probably my touchdown. Um, it was a long drive, and then they called a reverse to me. I was dead tired. So when they caught him, like, oh my gosh, are you serious? And the play worked out really well. Got a good, nice little round, and uh, had to make a play at the end towards the, in the end zone and, and get in there. So that's probably my best memory of that game. We actually put it in that week, and uh, I, I forget who we seen run it, but we put it in that week, and we ran it, and, it's, and it worked first time, so. Obviously, the last time you were up here, we asked you about 52 questions about Jamar. Uh, what went through your head when you scored that touchdown on Sunday? Say it again. Uh, we asked you about 52 questions about Jamar last time you were up here. Uh, what uh, went through your head when you scored that touchdown on Sunday? I was so happy for him. You know, um, you know all the criticism that he was getting uh, for those drop drop balls in the preseason. I knew that wasn't him. You know, he just he just had to focus. You know, um, he taking his off. It was the little things that was making him drop, taking his off, the, taking his eyes off the ball. You know, not looking all the way in. And I just knew once he got out here and got his feet wet, you know, I just knew he was going to be great, be the receiver that he is. So. Uh, I, w I would say, I'd say I played pretty good. Uh, had some nice routes, uh, but you know, on those routes, I felt like I could have did way better. Like on 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 one of them, uh, I was taking too many choppy steps. Uh, you know, you can't do that first. You know, I'm not saying those guys wasn't wasn't good. They're great DBs. You know, Bush, Breland. You know, Pat P. They're they're great DBs. Uh, but I was just I took too many choppy steps on my routes, and I wasn't really too happy with that when I watched it on film. And you know, I, I expect to expect myself to you know correct that this week and, and not taking the choppy steps and burst to full speed. Were y'all wondering what, what Joe would look like, what Burrow would look like once he got hit for the first time? Or was it because y'all hadn't seen that in practice or, or preseason game? Were y'all kind of wondering what it would be like first time he got hit? Uh, me personally, I I wasn't worried too worried about it. I know if he get hit, it's football. You're gonna get hit. You know, I once I knew once he get hit and. He was gonna be ready, you know. I mean, he took what, how many games off last year after he got hurt, and, and I just knew he was ready no matter what. So. Did you see him on the ground after after you scored the TD? Uh, no, I didn't. Once I saw him, he was congratulating me. Yeah. <laughs> so. Two more minutes. You had, a, you had a couple of routes on that one drive where you kind of got a guy spinning on the ground mm -hmm. at one point. I mean, is that kind of like the greatest accomplishment you can develop as a route runner, and how do you feel like you've grown in being able to do that to guys in the last year or two? Yeah, like I said, on those two routes specifically, uh, I didn't run really great routes. Um, I just so happened to, you know, get open. And yeah, I mean, obviously, as a receiver, that's what you always want to do is spin a DB around. But you know, um, yeah, it felt great. Obviously, uh, I was I was kind of pissed because on the second one, uh, I was out on the two. And so I was kind of pissed after that. But, you know, like I said, uh, it's always room for improvement on those routes, and I'm looking to do it. How does Frank coming in in the – oh, I'm sorry, go ahead. I was just going to ask, Tate, hey, how does Joe Mixon make your job as a receiver easier? Oh, my gosh. Uh, first of all, let me say this. You know, um, us as receivers, we try to make his job easier by, you know, blocking those down safeties and, and stuff and whatnot and getting those, those blocks for him. And then once we get him going, obviously it opens up, you know, the pass game for us. So uh, by us helping him and then him helping us, you know, it gets us receivers open and go out there and make plays. With uh, Frank coming in with, with the wide zone, is it more premium on 
you know, the receivers blocking? Uh, I mean, yeah, we got to focus more. We got to lock in more. You know, we got sometimes we're going there to block the, uh, them down safeties, uh, linebackers. But, you know, uh, in our in our minds, as long as we get Joe rolling, we're good. So. Last question. Why are you changing the number of the five? I know you don't really want to talk about it, but. Uh, I mean, it's not, it's not that big of a deal. But um, I just feel like, you know, Chad has done so much for this organization. And, you know, um, I just got a good feeling that this number is going to get lifted one day. And I just want to make a name for myself. You know, uh, a lot of people keep saying, I keep saying on Twitter uh, that, you know, Ocho Cinco 2.0, I don't want to be a 2.0. Not, no, no disrespect to Chad. You know, he's a great receiver, this and that. I just don't want to be a 2.0 for myself. You know, I want to be, you know, T. Higgins 1.0, number five. You know, um, just going out there and make a name for myself for this organization. Have you told Chad yet that you're changing your number? Uh, no, I haven't. Uh, uh, I'm pretty sure he'll probably see it. But, uh, uh, yeah, so. Thank you. Thank you.